Hello everybody. We are going to talk about a very important association, Stratocos bovis and colorectal cancer. What is Stratocos bovis? It's a streptococcus. So it, it's a catalase negative organism and they are gram positive cocaine chains because they are streptococci. And Stratocos bovis belongs to the Lansfield group D. Right, because they have a Lansfield group D antigen on their cell wall. So if you remember, there are four Lansfield groups that cause medically important infections. A, B, C, D. So this is Stratos group D. Lansfield group D Stratocoi are also positive for bilesculine. So that is another test that you, you can use to identify Lansfield group D Stratocoi. Right? If you don't have Lansfield group in kids, you can use bilesculine test to identify group D streptococci. I will talk about that test with the next slide. So group D streptococci are divided into two groups. Enterococci that includes Enterococcus faecalis and Enterococcus faecium. So they are common commensals in the gut. non enterococci this includes Streptococcus bovis. Actually some biotypes of Streptococcus bovis have been renamed as Streptococcus gallolyticus. Then how do you differentiate enterococci from non-enterococci? Meaning, how do you differentiate enterococcus faecalis and enterococcus faecium from streptococcus bovis? Right? So enterococci are heat tolerant. So that means they can grow at 60 centigrade for 30 minutes. But non-enterococci are heat sensitive. They cannot grow at that temperature for 30 minutes. Then also enterococci are salt tolerant. Enterococci can grow at 6.5% sodium chloride. But non-enterococci, they cannot grow at 6.5% sodium chloride. So that means non-enterococci, uh, non that is Stratobovis, is salt sensitive. So this is the bilesculine test. You can see on the left side, bilesculine, no, uh, the color of the normal bilesculine medium, right? But on the right side, you can see the inoculated medium so that to the right tube we have inoculated the uh, group D streptococci because group D streptococci hydrolyzes SQ into SQ lutein which is black color so that's a very important test to identify group D streptococci so we have to find the streptococcus bovis Stratocos bovis is found as a, is part of normal gut flora in 2.5 to 15 percent of the population meaning 2.5 to 15 percent of the population carries the organisms in their gut. In some patients, some people, especially elderly people and uh, those with chronic liver diseases, the organism can enter the bloodstream and act as an opportunistic pathogen. Right. So what, what, what do they cause? They can cause Streptococcus bovis bacteremia or endocarditis. Now when you talk about Streptococcus bovis endocarditis, unlike other types of infective endocarditis, Streptococcus bovis endocarditis can result in more valve damage because Streptococci, Streptococcus bovis endocarditis can result in involvement of multiple valves. Because in normally in other types of uh, infective endocarditis, the organism damage only one valve, maybe mitral valve, maybe the tricuspid, maybe the aortic valve. But in um, stress bovis endocarditis, there, there is involvement of multiple valves. At the same time, there, are, there is formation of multiple vegetations on, on one valve. So those are the two important features of Stratocos bovis endocarditis, endocarditis. Because of these features, there is more valve, more valve damage in Stratocos bovis endocarditis when you compare with other types of endocarditis. Then these endocarditis patients are also more likely to, to, more likely to develop uh, embolic phenomena such as strokes because they produce more emboli. More vegetations mean more emboli. So it is important to understand there is a strong association between Streptococcus bovis bacteremia and no endocarditis with large bowel neoplasms, maybe um, colorectal carcinoma, maybe premalignant adenomas. 
Studies have shown that 25 to 80 percent of patients with Streptococcus bovis bacteremia and 18 to 62 percent of patients with Streptococcus bovis endocarditis have underlying colorectal cancer. Streptococcus bovis bloodstream infections are also related to presence of colony cadenomas, especially the aggressive forms of polyps such as villus and tubulovillus adenomas that are more likely to be transformed into malignancies. So what you have to do is whenever you see a patient with Streptococcus bovis infection, meaning bloodstream infection, maybe bacteremia and no endocarditis, you need to order investigations to exclude large bowel neoplasms, I mean investigations like colonoscopy. The other important thing that you need to understand is these colonic neoplasms can develop several years after initial infection. So because of this, you need to follow up these patients even after recovery. 